to use a pump we use them because we need to increase the mechanic energy of the pump you know there is an inlet of energy mechanical energy to be precise and we either use it by to increase velocity of the flow increase a height for example if you have water here you want to increase the height of the water to another reservoir well you know that's not going to happen alone you need to add work and more importantly you use it to increase pressure to pressurize pressure is essentially uh, the ability of a fluid you have high pressure here then at this point is low pressure but well, expect it to move from low to high pressure uh, once again fluid density does not change and this is very critical for the pump uh, operation if it changes you will have problems in the impeller and eventually you're going to uh, destroy your pump the main classification is positive displacement pumps and kinetic pumps as the name implies this is due to the movement of the pump or the inside material or pieces we have rotatory which is the name imply are pieces that are rotating and reciprocal these are a little bit more tricky but they are also useful for example diaphragm now for kinetic pumps we have two typical one actually this is pretty similar to turbines you have many blades which move and the centrifugal you have only one impeller which has this here and starts moving and pressurizes the fluid. We need to study all the stuff that is behind this pump. For example, there is a motor, you need to move a motor. It's going to move and of course this is the inlet and then it goes out in the outlet. So we're going to check out a little bit on the common pieces and parts and operation of the pumps. We need to know the fluid type, if it's viscous, it's not viscous, is it uh, it vaporizes very easily or is very stable and it has some maybe solid parts or is it only fluid, liquids and so on. Also of course you need volumetric flow rate. Uh, if you have a very huge volumetric flow rate you will be probably using a centrifugal pump. You have very low centrifugal, uh, sorry, very low volumetric flow rates you're going to use maybe positive displacement pumps. You need to know definitely the suction conditions which is pressure, temperature, uh, pressure because we might mm, let's say have a very low pressure and therefore you will not be able to operate it because when you get this into the eye of the pump it's going to evaporate and will cavitate your pump. Composition as well and discharge actually it's not that important but also you need to know the discharge conditions obviously you're going to have a high pressure uh, fluid with normally a high temperature because pressurizing means increasing temperature and you may even change the composition depending on the vaporization of the elements well also you need of course to know how the system is set so how much energy pump or head requirements for now we're going to use head which is essentially how much pump requirement do you need and one thing is to know the head for example you if you recall it's joules per kilograms or you divide it by gravity you're going to say meters but eventually you want to know that on power or how much energy you're going to use per unit time that's power so horse power or even watts which are essentially joules per second also this is important, you need to know about spacing, maybe you have find the best pump ever but it won't fit your, I don't know, maybe it's a small area or maybe you don't have that much space so it won't be the best pump for you to operate or install. Dimensions, that's also important. Maybe the weight, maybe you're going to use it uh, in a platform and you have it very, let's say it's very heavy therefore you shouldn't use it because you're going to bend the platform or so on you need to know the cost of buying it that is the investment cost how much does the pump cost is it worth it it's going to uh, let's say uh, in the future it's going to be useful or you're just going to waste your money and operation costs many pumps are very nice suited for the business 
many other are not because they're going to be uh, let's say having a high cost of operation even though maybe it was cheap well yes it was cheap but operating the pump uh, is very expensive for example in maintenance and installing and when installing maybe also how pump requirements decrease maybe the efficiency decreases with time faster and many other criteria will be also important maintenance costs I already told you the type of pump you want to use many times you want to force a for example a centrifugal pump even though it might not be the best uh, pump type to use but it is the only one you have so guys one thing you get when you subscribe or enroll to any of my courses is a premium membership and what do I mean when premium membership is essentially that you are my priority member what does that mean is essentially if you send me an email or if you post a question in any of the practice course or even quiz sections I will answer you as soon as possible and that is a thing I don't usually do in YouTube I love answering questions in YouTube but you are now my member you are my student you want to learn and I want you to learn in this course so whatever doubt you have you can send it either via email or post it here in the questions and I will answer you as soon as possible. So you need to, let's say, be able to use it, install it and understand it and operate it. The supplier is also very important because the supplier is a well-named brand or is a very cheap one or maybe the supplier has very short lead time. He will definitely give you the pumping in one month or so or will it take uh, three four months well that's also important you need to know and be confident with your supplier sizing and type of connection that's very important as well many times you have many pumps such as these that change the diameters well that's actually no problem recall from the last section we've seen before we can use sudden expansion equipments or fittings that will force the pumping pipes right here because you are gonna change the pump it's already fixed but you can't also change the pipe because you already have it so the only thing you can do is to add a expander and a reducer right here also you want to know the revolution per minute that your pump is operating and the frequency that's very important frequency it's measured in hertz actually we have different especially in America versus USA uh, sorry versus Europe you have different common frequencies of operation that's more into the electrical engineering part but still important uh, the impeller what type of material is it uh, steel or is it uh, iron what's what's being used the diameter is also important the size the angle all that's the shape of the impeller is very important pump material as well and the minimum and maximum discharge and suction pressure so what is the minimum operation pressure right here and the maximum operation right here is it suitable for your operation or even for your pipe is it safe or is not safe you need to check out that as well so yeah that was the common things you need to know for pumping or at least for the pump and as I told you before, we have centrifugal ones, and we got many types of turbine type, the impeller sizing, what is it, uh, impeller, and so on, let me show you the types of pump, actually, it was just an introduction, but actually let's start with the type of pumps, you know, there are pumps, rotodynamic, which I told you is rotatory, and the positive displacement pumps, Here. These are the kinetic ones, I told you before. Centrifugal pump is the most common one used. Uh, avoid this one. And the axial pumps, which are like turbine-like pumps. Then we have the positive displacement pumps, pumps, which is reciprocation and rotatory pumps. And then you open... Well, we have axial pumps actually right here. But centrifugal pumps, we have a lot actually. is all these right here, all these types. Uh, rotatory pumps. We have screw, slide pumps, rotor pumps, gear pumps. We're going to check them, each one of them later. Reciprocation pump is either piston or plunger pump. And 
Centrifugal pump, as you can see, there are many types pressure by flow and propeller, casing, installation, and so on. All these criteria open, closed, etc. So, ex for rotatory, we have many rotatory right here, rotatory pumps. So, let's analyze. We have paint pumps, piston pumps, low pumps, gear pumps, screw pumps, the most common ones. For some trifugal pumps, we have right here either radial flow, axial flow, we don't want axial flow, we want right now radial, single suction, double suction. There are many single stage, multiple stage. Actually, we're going to study single stage and multiple uh, stage. Uh, well, there are many, many pumps. Uh, yeah, essentially that's what I wanted to show you that there are many pumps. We're going to start analyzing the most common ones and how do they work. So hopefully you like the introduction to the type of pumps and see you in the next videos. This was a free preview. If you want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you're for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.